Hi, it's Josh from Apt. Did you just get your new Apple TV? It's a simple way to connect. It's easy to set up. And we're going to do it right now from start to finish. We have a simple setup. Just we had that extra HDMI cable that's not included, plugged into the back of our Apple TV, plugged in straight to our TV. So that's all we need besides obviously using the power cable in the box. And I'm ready to go with my remote. So we have an easy example here. Maybe you have an audio video switching, HDMI switching receiver. Maybe your setup's different. Maybe you need to run the optical audio cable that you might need to buy separately. There's other connections, uh, way, ways to do this. But we're going to show you how to set it up. So we have a simple connection. We're good to go. If I have an iOS 7 device, I could actually pair it up with Bluetooth and do the whole setup right from my device. Uh, try it if you want to give it a shot. It's easier to type on those devices than what we're about to see using the remote control. Also, if you've got a Bluetooth keyboard, it tells us on the home screen right here uh, to pair up your Bluetooth keyboard. So turn on that Bluetooth keyboard, and then it's going to pair up to your Apple TV. And now you're going to be able to type on that instead of what you're about to see. So let's get started. I'm going to choose English. And by the way, this is infrared. It needs to see the front of my Apple TV. So if your Apple TV is hiding somewhere by your equipment down low, uh, this is not going to see it. So you're in trouble. You might need to relocate it while you set it up temporarily. Or you've made a, you know, the choice of using that um, iOS way to set it up through your Wi-Fi network. All right, so I'm going to jump on to uh, my Wi-Fi here in the studio. And let's see what we get. App devices should allow me to connect to the internet. The Apple TV needs to make that connection to the internet to pretty much do anything for the setup. So if you have no Wi-Fi in your house, uh, you're in trouble. This is not going not gonna to work. You're not going to be able to move forward and set up your Apple TV. All right, so now we are ready to go. I'm going to say, sure, Apple. You can uh, go ahead and have that uh, privacy statement. It looks like there's some diagnostics might be sent through, and that's okay. You make your choice. There's no, uh, no change in what will happen next. So we are continuing to the next phase. We're about to start to have to type stuff. All right, so now we're on the home screen, but we're not really done yet. I'm going to go to settings. So right now we're connected to the network, but I'm going to go into the iTunes store. I'm not signed into the iTunes store. This is a big deal. You need to sign into your iTunes account here for the purchase for the purpose of making purchases and things like that. Uh, but there's also another area where you're going to need to make sure you have your uh, home sharing activated. Those are two really important things to do to make all your, your iPhones and iPods and iPads be able to really interact with uh, your Apple TV. So let's sign in. I'm just going to sign in here. Here's that screen I was warning you about. So I'm going to sign in with my username. And I got to go from one to the next. It's kind of annoying. All right, so I've got my Apple ID listed here. You got to have your Apple ID, and you're going to need to know your Apple ID password. Oh, by the way, as you can see on the screen, I can go to Capital. I can go to some special characters too. So if I wanted to switch my view, I could go to the very top and toggle around uh, between these options for typing. Or if you're lucky, you've got an Apple Bluetooth keyboard, and you're not dealing with this whole screen at all. So now that I've got my username, I'm going to submit that. Now my password. Do I want Apple TV to remember my password for future purchases? Sure, let's do it. That'll make it easy. So now it's going to access the iTunes store. It's going to log into my Apple ID. And now this Apple device is now kind of paired up to my Apple ID. And I'm ready to go to the iTunes store. And I could rent a movie and things like that. I'll probably get flagged for uh, maybe a little security because it might mean me to enter in like the four security or the three security digits of your credit card to, to move forward. All right, so I am logged in in the iTunes store. but. Uh, let me go back. On the remote, there's a menu button. The menu button takes you backwards. So if I hit menu, menu again, here I am on the main screen. But the middle button in the center of the circle that you can go up, down, left, right, the middle button selects stuff. So I'm going to go back into settings for us. And now uh, under computers, the very bottom here, turn on home sharing. 
home sharing is a big deal and home sharing allows like your other like let's say you have a PC with iTunes and inside that PC's iTunes you've got movies, TV shows, you have a whole bunch of music and then on that PC you've got a my pictures folder. The my pictures folder has tons of your personal photos. You want all that stuff to come to your 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 new HD TV that has an Apple TV? Great. But you got to turn on home sharing here and then you got to go into your iTunes. And there's a place in iTunes to turn on home sharing with the same Apple ID done. On your iPhones and your iPads, same thing. The benefit with the iPhones and the iOS stuff, like your iPad and iPhone, is there's a remote app. It's called Remote. Download it from the App Store, and because you have home sharing turned on, you could just pick up your iPhone or your iPad, open up the remote app, it'll automatically see the Apple TVs in your house if you have more than one. Select it, and you're logged in. Now you could swipe up, down, left, right, you can hit the menu button. You can control this whole screen with just your device. You don't need this. You could throw that in the drawer. You could hide this. Some people stick them on the back of their TV. Some people have the HDMI cable going far away to their equipment. Uh, we don't care because we don't need line of sight anymore. You can control the whole thing using remote, but you need to have home sharing turned on. Those are the big ones. We're really ready to go right now, and I can access and operate my Apple TV because I've pretty much completed the setup. Uh, while we're here, though, I'm going to give you a couple quick pointers. Uh, one thing is the um, in the main menu, uh, the general tab, I meant to say, uh, the sleep after feature. Uh, this is obviously a preference, but if I keep hitting the middle button, I could toggle over to never. In my house, I have all my Apple TVs set to never because I want to go to my, and I use them a lot, so when I go to the Apple TV uh, input on my televisions, it's ready to go. There's no waking up, there's really nothing. It's just always ready to rock. A lot of people want to conserve energy, and if you were to have it go to sleep, fine, you could totally do that. Here's where you make the change. Otherwise, you got your, your Wi-Fi is connected, so I could open up YouTube, uh, the apps like Netflix, Hulu Plus, uh, HBO Go, you're going to have to subscribe, you're going to have to log into your subscriptions, so you'll have to know all those passwords. But we are ready to go, our setup's complete, turn on home sharing, and lastly, for photos, I referenced if your Mac or PCs have photos that you want to share, uh, yeah, you turn on home sharing, but there's one extra step. Inside iTunes, you have to choose what photos to share to Apple TV. Once you say, share my entire iPhoto library, share my entire My Pictures library, uh, you're good to go. You're just going to swing over to computers, and then you'll see all the computers in your house as long as iTunes is open and, and the computer, of course, is turned on. Then they'll appear. You could log into that computer. You could stream pictures from wherever you've told iTunes that you're going to let it. And then you could stream content. You could log into the library of music, the library of TV shows on that computer and stream it. So it's a real good media hub as well as the many apps that we're going to keep seeing pop up on the Apple TV. So you have a lot of other instructional videos on apps. Let's hear some comments. Was your Apple TV as easy as this?